All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, what episode are we on? 26. 26 of the Dog Bone Podcast. Again, I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, this week, we are uh, breaking the uh, the way we normally do it. Usually, we're last few, we've been doing questions uh, from Facebook or Instagram, answering those. Um, I do have a couple that we're going to get to. Uh, we're going we're gonna to sneak one in here. Um, an episode in between though um, just kind of give you an update on one of the projects that we have going uh, and it started so we mentioned it um, last week when we were recording we mentioned it uh, but it was a little early because we didn't know exactly the timing of it um, but it's here now so uh, it's kind of exciting and I think it's something that might be worth following along um, with if you're interested in the idea of how some of our training um, transfers uh, to dogs that aren't necessarily labs. I mean, you, you guys are used to watching us and, and hearing about us and seeing us talk about retrievers. Um, it's because that's what I feel really comfortable with. It's the majority of the dogs that we train are retrievers, um, more specifically even dialed down even tighter. Um, we like, I like um, the style of a little UK bred dog, um, UK, United Kingdom, the, the European style. Um, a lot of people call them British labs. Um, but they're they're you know coming from Scotland or coming from Northern Ireland or or England itself and that style of dog uh, fits what I feel like my training style um, matches it best. Um, I definitely don't think that that is exclusive or or only designed or built for that style of dog. I think it suits them very well. But I also think. <clears throat> Dog training is dog training, and I just don't think that um, when, when we do workshops, when we do our handler workshops, we've got all kinds of breeds, um, pointing dogs, lots of retrievers. Um, we have had several shepherds um, over the years come through. Um, we've had, what was it, that Australian shepherd yep. um, this last time. Um, we've had we uh, lots of different breeds, um, several breeds that we don't know what their breed was. They were kind of just a mixed breed, mutt, mutt, if you will, and I don't say it in a bad way. It's just uh, we don't know what breeds they were, but they were re uh, some rescue dogs. And so I don't think that our training is, and I, I want to make sure people realize that our when we talk about training, I'm not narrowing it down or, or ultra specific to the idea of you have to have a certain type of dog. I do think that certain traits, inherent traits, are nice depending on what you're going to do with the dog. And we put an emphasis on deer dog stuff, meaning tracking, um, game recovery, finding deer that otherwise may not be be found, um, shed training. Uh, we, we're looking for shed antlers with a lot of these dogs. But we also do gun dog and bird dog stuff, lots of that. Uh, you want to reach over there and slip her lead off? We've got a dog right behind us right now, a little pup, um, and she's starting to chew a little bit. I've got a slip lead on her, one of our adjustable leader collars, and um, I've been using it with her. I'm gonna use it with her for some doing some heel work, and I peek around the corner, and she's kind of chewing on it a little bit. I don't want to form a bad habit, so I asked Ben if he'd slip it off, he did. Now she lays there and just looks at me. Well, she's the new thing um, that, we, that I wanted to kind of get you um, in on. The idea of, we got this little project. Um, she, her name is Arrow. She is a Malinois Shepherd mix. Um, and so I am gonna be doing a lot of documenting of her training. Um, ben is gonna help me with recording it. Cody Go Back, we're in the middle of a series right now called Cody Go Back, which is teaching that little yellow dog of our, or of our, our friends um, own her but we're training her we're teaching her to go back we're teaching her handling uh, that series is live on our youtube channel um, real interesting and it's developing really well we sent her home over fourth of july weekend um, she's gonna be back next week but in the meantime uh, we brought in arrow and arrow is um, i think she's about 14 or 15 maybe 14 weeks right now so she's bigger than what i'm used to for 14 weeks she looks a little bit more like a dog um, than i'm used to at that young of an age usually our 14 week old puppies are pretty little um, she's not big but i think she's she's i don't know 25 pounds something like that but it's got a little bit more size to her um, she's really a sweet little dog uh, in 24 less than 24 hours of having her um, i can say that she's a very soft dog. I, I think, you know, we, 
we blanket that term on retrievers, soft or a lot of drive, a lot of grit. They're a little bit harder dogs. I, I don't, I think that definition can go across the board as far as breeds go. I would say that she is a soft little dog, soft style. Um, I don't say soft as a negative. I, I like soft. Um, I don't need a lot of pressure. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on a dog. Um, I don't think you need to. I think it it um, erodes some trust potentially. Um, I want dogs that work for me and with me. Um, I, I think cooperative is a good term um, for what I look for in dogs. I want dogs that want to work with me. Um, I don't want them doing things out of fear. I'm not a treat trainer. Um, so you're, I'm not going to bribe dogs to do things either. Um, I, I want to form habits. So she is a perfect um, little project for us to show that I think the same style or a very similar style to what we're doing with our labs um, is going to work with this dog. I just have a ton of confidence in it. And so um, it's going to be a great way, a great opportunity for us to share that and show it. So we're going to, we're going to document the training process. Our objectives and goals with, the, with her right now are need to be realistic. Um, and so with her owners, I had this conversation because I feel that it's really important um, for people to understand expectations. Um, no, no, there's no magic. Uh, there's not, not, not something that you can do that just magically, um, accelerates dogs from a maturity stamp, from a maturity standpoint or, uh, ability to process things standpoint. You can't speed things up with dog training. Um, I, pro I push the idea of we don't train them, we raise them. Um, similar to how we raise kids. You don't train kids. We raise them. It takes a long time. Um, there's lots of ups and downs. It's quite a roller coaster. Lots of good stuff, but then you run, run into things that, that become issues too, and how do you fix those? And, and a lot of times, some of those mistakes or, or things that happen that, that don't go very smoothly, those are great learning opportunities. Dogs gotta make some mistakes in order to learn. Um, it is a combination of, of praise when they're doing the right thing and a little bit of pressure when they're doing the wrong thing. Um, but I just think that there's there's a, a balance that we're constantly searching for and we're just trying I, I just did a story on Instagram and I said we're place training her um, which is gonna be huge um, I just think that it's gonna make life so much easier for her owners um, she's laying on the cot on the dog bone bed right now behind me um, started that last night and she did real well with it now she ran off of it um, as all dogs will because why won't they she ran off of it we put her back on it said no 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 put her back no put her back put her back and all of a sudden she's super sharp and so within three corrections of no 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 and put her back on she gets right to the edge and hangs off and she doesn't go and that's when I praise her and tell her you're a good dog that's what we're looking for you to do and real quickly she curls up and lays down on that bed so she's been doing a really nice job with it um, we've introduced her to some patients um, she's not real so far now literally had her less than 24 hours so one of the things that I really stress that you need to have is you got to have this feel and connection and trust with these dogs and as she comes into our house for the first time I don't know why she would trust or have a lot of connection with me um, I certainly don't have it with her and I I kind of feel like it's a mutual thing so I need to build that and that'll take some time so quite honestly for the first couple days here we're not going to do it do much of anything uh, we're going to get to know each other she's going to get to know me i'm going to get to know her i'm going to start to develop um her trust and i need to trust her a bit um so yesterday i was hesitant to even take her off the lead um i put her on the lead we walked her around the yard she let her do her business um after her long trip um kind of tested it out a little bit she's got a real nice little recall uh, today I had her out near our pigeons, um, put it on our story where she was up by our pigeons. We have a little pigeon coop um, with some do some birds for training and um, they're distracting, they're tempting. And she thought it was pretty cool. She thought it was pretty interesting. And I was able to recall her away from it and have her come to me. And so that was real good. Brought her in um, this morning, have to feed all the dogs. So I fed all three of ours first. And she sat there with a little lead on and she just watched patiently. Um, she came into the house very vocal. Uh, when she got dropped off, she's barking and uh, raising all kinds of hell. Um, she came in and I just don't allow it. I, I, we're not gonna allow, I, I kind of think that vocalization is um, kind of like a kid 
uh, throwing a little bit of a tantrum, um, looking for attention. Um, we don't allow it. I don't, I don't reward it um, by giving her attention. Now, sometimes you got to realize the attention they're looking for, they don't even care if it's negative attention. They just want attention, especially when they're little. So, you know, she yips a little bit and she yaps and ah, 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 that's enough, a little bit of tone back to her and um, she hasn't barked since. And so I do think that some of that barking, um, when, when pups start doing that, barking at you, it's a very, very clear sign of disrespect. Um, they are trying to establish that they're, they're the boss, I, not on my terms. And so, and I don't have to get real bully with them. I just don't allow it. And my body language and my mannerism is very strong, not forceful, just strong leadership. And man, they look for a, they look for a leader. When they find them, they follow them. And so we're going to, we, we've already seen, um, I have not heard her bark um, since she's been here with the exception of uh, the kennel. Boy, she does not like her kennel. She doesn't like her crate. We crate train our dogs. It makes it easy for housebreaking them. Um, no accidents out of her knock on wood yet. Uh, it's early. Um, routine is going to be how we establish that routine of feeding, coming out of the kennel, going outside right away, doing her business, coming back in, being on place. She's not going to have the opportunity to free roam our house. I brought her in uh, earlier today and she immediately jumped up on the couch and that was a firm, nah, -uh, not going to happen. Um, and she looked at me like, Ooh, boy, I'm really sorry about that. Put her back on place and she's fine. So she's got, she's got a few options. She's with me under control. Um, either on lead or I'll, I'll establish a little bit of confidence with her off lead here soon. Or she's on her place like she is right now, curled up and um, just, she's not even sleeping, she's just laying there. Uh, she'll probably fall asleep here pretty quick. But Or she's in her kennel or crate. And last night was kennel or crate. Uh, she is used to sleeping with her family uh, where she came, she doesn't, I don't think she sleeps in a kennel. Uh, and it proved, we proved it last night. But um, she got pretty vocal there. Uh, I got up, I let, you know, she went in, she was pretty quiet for about 10, 15 minutes. Then she threw a little tantrum and wanted to get the hell out of there. So I waited. Um, I had let her out. She went to the bathroom right before she went in there. So I knew she didn't have to go to the bathroom, but I waited. Uh, she fought it a little bit, um, fought it and barked and kind of scratched a little bit. And so I came downstairs and I put a blanket over the top of it um, just to separate her from the other dogs and the distractions. And she settled in actually pretty good for about an hour. Um, she got up and started whining. And so I heard that, I got up, I went down, I let her out right away. She went to the bathroom. Um, she peed right away, Put her, brought her back in, um, put her back in her kennel and she screamed bloody murder. She just didn't like it. Um, so she fussed for, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. I don't even know. Um, and then she settled in and she slept most through the night. Uh, got up early, um, five, five o'clock ish, which is not, not a lot later than what we're, I'm usually between five and five 30. So her timing was pretty good. Um, got up, took her outside, let her go to the bathroom. She did really good. Um, and she settled in nicely, put her on place the rest of the morning. Um, so our routine is going to be different, I think, than what she's used to. She's not going to have free run of the house. Um, my other dogs don't have free run of the house either. They're on place, they're in their kennels, or they're with me under control. So it's just a routine thing now. And I put a, I put a, a story on our Instagram. We're feeding the other dogs. That's another thing that we're going to do is she's going to eat last. So we ate first, um, humans, we ate in front of her. I fed our other two, our other three dogs. She sat nicely, really nicely, and watched. Real respectful little dog. Um, so that's really, that's really nice. Um, they've done a nice job with her to this point, uh, kind of establishing that she's she's uh, she's a good part of the pack. She's not going to be the center of attention. She's not fighting for that all the time, which is part personality and it's part cultural. Um, and so we need to carry that on. But one of the things that we did was we had her watch the other dogs eat. The other dogs ate, she sat nice and quiet. And I, I made a little post on Instagram and I, on our story and I talked about patience. This is just an example of patience. So she got to eat last. Now what I gotta get, one of the things I'm gonna be working on is trying to figure out how can I get her to go into that kennel and she really braces against it. Um, so as she gets in a feeding routine, I'm gonna see how food drives her. She doesn't seem super food driven to me. Um, she ate and I don't, and I think part of it is, is because where it sounded like they had food out for her 
I, I, I got some text messages back and forth with her owners. Um, they fed her, and it sounded like she had um, kibble, dry kibble all the time, and then she's got uh, like a wet food, um, like a canned food kind of, not in a can, but it's just in little packets. But um, she, f she feeds a mix of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the routine, and we're gonna do the same routine that we do with our dogs. We're gonna feed in the morning, we're going to feed at night. I am going to stick with the kind of wet food that, they ha that they've been giving her. Um, I'm going to mix it with kibble, dry kibble, and I'm going to add a little bit of warm water to it because I want that. I want the dog to be able to eat it quickly. We're going to give her a window of time to eat. She's going to get um, five, ten minutes max, and if she leaves the food, doesn't finish it and leaves it, that'll be it. I'll pick it up. Um, so she may be hungrier uh, during that middle stretch of the day because she didn't eat as much in the morning that she would have nibbled on all throughout the day. She's going to get on a routine and what it's going to do is it's going to help us with housebreaking and ensuring that we don't have any issues um, from, a, from an accident standpoint. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to allow for us to really get used to traveling with her um, and not messing around with food. When we feed our dogs on the go, they got to eat because we got other places to go. We got things we got to do. So we stop, we feed, they eat, they go back in their kennels, we're off on the road again. This dog's going to travel quite a bit, so we do want to ensure that she gets on a quick routine of it's time to eat. It's just going to be better off for her. I think one of the things is she's going to thrive on is routine, um, especially at our house. Um, we're just we're real routine with these dogs because we have to be um, balancing between family and kids and work and all that stuff. Um, we have to be on a good routine um, to get the most out of them. And I do think that they appreciate the stability that way. So one of the things that we'll be doing is feeding her on a routine. It's going to be a little bit different, I think, than what she's used to. Um, it will take a few days. And that's another reason why food right now, I just don't think is that valuable to her. Because I think she's she gets it more often than not. And so um, as I as I build up her, um, it, we'll see, maybe not, but if she builds up this excitement about a real positive thing during the day, it should be feeding time. Um, I'll start feeding her in her kennel, um, door open, up, but I'll, she'll have to go in there to eat it. And so what I'm gonna do is I wanna start to reverse her feelings of this kennel is not a good thing to be this kennel is a real safe place. Um, and, and a place I don't mind being. So that's just gonna make life a lot easier when she goes in there. Um, and we do have to close the door because she won't fight to get out. Uh, she won't be so worried about figuring out how to get out of there. She'll just settle in, I'll likely fall asleep, similar to how she's doing right now on her, on her bed, um, that little place cot that we have for her. So a lot of, a lot of things. So the, one of the things that I just have to realize and be aware of is we just completely um, kind of uprooted this little dog's life. Uh, she left something she'd become very comfortable with over the last probably six weeks, five, six, seven weeks, um, and we're changing it. So before I get all excited about, oh, let's start working on this, this, and this, let's just get the dog comfortable. Let's get the dog to start trusting us um, and having a better understanding of what to expect. Get some routine going. Get them to understand that they can have some confidence in me. Um, it will be it will be mirrored because I will gain confidence in them, and it'll just be a lot easier on me as a handler. So um, that's a kind of our goal over the next uh, few days at a minimum. She is going to get go up north with us. Uh, we're going up. Uh, we're going up north to my parents' lake, uh, the, their place on the lake, and we're going to spend the weekend up there for 4th of July. Uh, we just did a podcast on 4th of July. What was it, our last one, right? Yep. Yep. Last one we did was on 4th of July, the fear uh, or the hesitation I have with intro introduction to gunfire, um, loud noises more, in more particular. So we got to be real conscious of that. This little dog's going to do some deer stuff. This little dog's going to do some tracking. She's going to do some shed hunting. Um, we're going to get into some of that over the next month. Um, very, very basic intro, but like I, if you followed any of our stuff, I spend so much time building the foundation before we get real formal into the field. And that was part of the expectations conversation that we had with their owners. I want them to understand, look, we, we got to build this foundation first. And the cool part about this project is going to be, we're going to help them get this foundation started over the next month. Um, we are not keeping this dog the whole time. So usually I'm keeping dogs for clients for a year, 18 months, however long it takes with involvement of the owners. Um, I just don't think you can train these dogs and hand them off. I think you have to train the trainers as much or more than you do the dogs. 
the difference with this little project will be we're going to work her for the first month. Um, it helps. It just helps out from a scheduling standpoint. Uh, her owners are, are in Africa right now. Um, so they're on a hunt. So she's with us. But when they get back, the important part will be training the trainers and transitioning the idea of what we've done, what we're doing, the direction we're going. And then what's going to be really nice is uh, I'm going to be able to help work with them to continue the training. I'm not going to, Arrow's not going to stay with us, um, but we will hopefully be able to kind of remote help them um, continue the journey. I just think it's an important, the point that, that's going to be made with this dog is hopefully similar to what we've done with all the dogs we've documented, whether it be live with Spry, whether it's this Cody series, whether it's um, Ellie when we did Ellie live and when we did her sister Kimber live and all that stuff on our YouTube channel. All those dogs are different processes. They're different journeys with different dogs. They all took a little bit different time, amounts of time. Um, the sequencing was a little different. It's not like a, it's not like um, a step-by-step -step because every dog is so different. So this is gonna be a nice mix because of a different breed. Uh, we're gonna work in some remote training when her owners get back and um, just kind of a fun little project for us. And I really think the point that to be made is my hope is that I can show um, a very, very similar training style to a dog that you know we've dialed in pretty, pretty precise and pretty specific from a style of dog um, and show how it transfers to a totally different style of dog, uh, Malinois Shepherd mix. So we've got uh, a di another working dog, um, just, just typically looked at it as a different style of working dog and a different job in, in general. Um, all the, you know, the one thing that will remain the same is the jobs ultimately that she's going to do are very similar to our, our little dogs. Uh, she's a family, she's gonna be a family dog first. Um, that's going to require just a lot of good foundational work. Um, uh, she's going to be able to, she's got to be able to go everywhere, do everything, um, and be an asset, not a, not an issue. Um, she's going to help the places she's at, not, uh, create an issue with in those spots. The other, then the secondary stuff is in the field, tracking, game recovery, shed hunting, um, those types of specific things, more specific towards deer dogs. But um, so we're kind of excited about it. So Arrow, she's got a bit, she's got a bigger following than than we do combined on our on seventeen on, times on our probably. on our page. So uh, so she's got a nice, she's got a nice following. What is it actually called, Ben? It's Arrow's Arrow's Life Adventures. Let me let me look it up here quick because I'm gonna give you guys a heads up on it. Um, Just look at your story. Her name, her page is Arrow's Adventure Life. So Arrow's underscore adventure underscore life. Um, so, and and you'll see a lot of her. Po you'll see you can, you'll see some of this stuff that we're putting on our Dogbone Hunter page, um, shared there. Her owners are um, Bo the Bomars from Bomar Hunting, so they're sharing some stuff on their page as well. Um, and so we're just going to try to try to use her as a really good example of training is training, regardless of the dog. Um, and and I'll reword training and say raising. Raising dogs is, is just like raising kids. And that it's they're always learning, we're always training. And as soon as we adapt that mindset and that concept, then it, training actually becomes pretty easy because it doesn't take any extra time. We just, we just incorporate it and build it into our life. And that's our plan uh, with Arrow. That's our plan with every dog that we have through here, um, whether it be our own personal dogs or any of our clients. So I hope this, uh, I hope this becomes kind of a fun little series. Uh, we'll be posting stuff. So, so follow along uh, on our on our different channels, Dogbone Hunter stuff, our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to document as much of it as we can um, and share as much of it as you can because I just think it's a lot. There's a lot of value in it for folks, especially those who have the other breeds. Because I just think this is good. We're going to get rid. My hope is we're going to get rid of the the line, and I hear it often, especially at seminars, and yeah, I get it through social media stuff. Is oh, that works with your dogs, but mine's a different kind of dog. My dog, my my dog is this kind. It it don't, won't do that. It won't be that calm. I hear that all the time. This little dog is not not known to be. Uh, you know, everyone says that these little British dogs are oh, they're so calm. It's it's 100% genetics. I think it's partial genetics. I think it's very heavily influenced by the cultural influences around them. 
And so we're going to show you. I, I just I just don't think for a second that we can't do it um, with another type of dog, and Arrow is going to be a great example of that, is my hope. So uh, thank you again for listening. A little bit different uh, format. We're going to get back. We've got some more questions that have come in, and I've kind of earmarked them through Instagram and or Facebook that we will address um, as well. Ben and I will be recording more podcasts. We're just we're not going to do this. Um, I actually think we can do some kind of some arrow update podcast things too. That'll be really easy to do. Um, so you're, if you're following along with her story, there'll be a little bit of a sequence um, from a podcast standpoint. But we're going to continue with our other podcast stuff as well. We're just going to fit extra ones in. Um, kind of documenting Arrow's journey here. So uh, thank you again so much for listening. Um, thank you for your support. If you would do us the favor, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a review, um, that helps greatly with us being able to grow the awareness. And also, uh, if you would subscribe to it, um, it just gives you the ability to get the updates and get the new ones when they drop and all that stuff. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we'll talk with you again soon.